Assalamualaikum. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and good day to everybody. So my name is Amir Shahwa bin Kamis and today I'm going to present a case review entitled Collision between Cargo Ship at Me and Fishing Vessel Tornado. A case review and lesson learned. Alright, so this is only a case review. Very simple and straightforward uh, study. Uh, the uh, other than other than trying to uh, provide the lesson learned behind the case, uh, this study was also intended to show, to guide to the cadets, diploma holder, and maybe new researcher in Academy of Malaysia on how to conduct a study, how to conduct a simple study. This is just a and just an example lah. Uh, for the new researcher to start a research before they can proceed to the next level of research. So hopefully, okay, hopefully other than the lesson learned that we are going to uh, explain, yeah, I'm going to explain in this presentation, hopefully you guys get some idea on how to conduct a research, simple research. Alright, the introduction. So on, on October 4, 2022, cargo ship at me left Norway for Copenhagen, Denmark at around 700 hours. Uh, so in a fishing zone area, the navigator noticed a signal from small vessel on the radar. Uh, but uh, none of it are causing concern to the navigator. So the navigator proceed to do some administrative job. Then 13 minutes later, ship struck a fishing vessel, which uh, the navigator uh, saw on the starboard side of the ship. All right. The aim of the study is to offer valuable perspective to the cadets of Academy of Malaysia regarding marine accident and the significance of navigation safety, as mandated by the SOLAS. So, in order to accomplish this aim, three objectives were formulated. The first objective is to understand the cause of event leading to an incident. Second one is to identify the main contributing factors to the incident. And the third one is to get expert advice on precaution for preventing similar incident. Alright, so next one is the methodology. So the methodology is rather simple, very straightforward. First, we conduct a literature review on the incident. So we go through the incident report. And, uh, and then after that, we identify the main contributing factors that are causing the incident and also we are trying we are trying to look uh, for side factors uh, to the incident and then once we identify the contributing factor we carry out a group discussion among the authors and the panel expert these panel expert are basically the lecturers in academy of Malaysia, the master mariner so we basically we are we present to them and then they will you know uh, give us uh, the 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 observation uh, uh, what were they thinking on what are the preventive measures that can be taken to avoid similar occurrence right for finding in discussion uh, we are going to talk about two things one is main factors okay and then the additional measures that can be taken in order for us to avoid similar occurrence in the future. Okay. Normally, normally uh, during case study, if you do, if you normally when the when a researcher do a case study, what happens is they will come up, uh, they will review a case, and then after that they will replicate, okay, replicate the similar case. Maybe using simulator, ship simulator, or maybe using a small boat in a pool, okay, uh, in order for them to understand what can be done to avoid the similar incident. Uh, that one is another uh, higher level of uh, study. But in our case, 
because we just want to give some idea on how to conduct a study um, we are trying to identify the additional uh, the major to avoid the similar occurrence only by interviewing the panel expert okay uh, the master the ex master mariner uh, which is currently in alum working as lecturer and senior lecturer Okay, so the first uh, factor that we identified was over-reliance on navigation aids. So according to the report, the navigator of the cargo ship conducted a radar scan in order to assess potential hazard. However, the fishing vessel was not identified. So just because the navigator doesn't see any clutter or any target on the radar, the navigator proceeds to do you know, an administrative job. So meaning to say, the navigator was over reliant over rely on the on the capability of the radar without using other equipment other available equipment uh, that available on the bridge and according to rule 5 lookout you need to use all available means okay by sight by hearing electronic equipment whatever you can find during a lookout okay for so our conclusion was over reliance on navigation aids so that one is the first conclusion All right for the second one is under utilization of navigation aids okay in the report it was mentioned that the ban was or bridge navigation watch alarm system watch uh, deactivated everybody know the mariners know that the bridge navigation watch alarm system is very annoying uh, equipment it will give you an alarm every okay, 12 minutes okay, uh, to alert you in case you, you know you faint or you sleep but in this case he did uh, the, the, the navigator didn't sleep the navigator just simply doing some other job but let let us uh, just imagine for a while if the bandwidth was activated this equipment will actually alert okay, the navigator from doing the administrative job for 30 minutes straight at least to you know when 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 the alarm sound maybe he, okay he realized oh i i didn't go i didn't watch the outside for some time right so we'll give you some trigger it will trigger the navigator to carry up and then uh, other other uh, thing also under utilization of navigation aids that can be seen in this uh, study also the navigator did not of uh, overlay the radar with the ais because sometimes you cannot see the clutter on the radar you cannot see the clutter on the radar but if the ais detect something it will be on the radar if you put the overlay on the radar so even though there is no clutter but still there is a symbol of ship on the radar then this one will be will actually alert you to go out and look using your own sight right so that's another point okay, so these are some of the additional measure um, that was found uh, first one is watchkeeping procedure need to be evaluated and modified uh, including the handover checklist uh, the fence, uh, when 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 handing over uh, we need to check whether the uh, bridge navigation watch alarm system is activated or not uh, the cpa the tcpa the setting of arpa okay and then arpa setting need to be defined further and masking standing order can be um, uh, enhance further in terms of uh, what are the things that need to be done during the navigation watch. Alright, as a conclusion, the study aims to review the uh, accident report and then from the accident report, we try to find the main contributing factor which is excessive reliance on navigation equipment and under utilization of available aids the study used narrative review method and next the study um, 
interview expert to analyze the finding and to propose recommendation to improve safety, uh, which include uh, revising washkeeping procedure, uh, configuring ALPA parameter, enhance master standing order with the goal of preventing similar incident in the future. Again, I want to uh, highlight here, this study is very simple study that was conducted to give some idea to the new researcher and cadets in alam on how to conduct a research. Normally, the researcher will come out with a uh, simulator analysis, maybe a simulator analysis or model study in order to find the, um, the method of avoiding similar occurrence in the future. Uh, but since we just wanted to give some idea on how to conduct a research to the new researcher and cadet in alam, uh, we did uh, as simple as possible just to you know uh, boost the confidence in researcher uh, in alam. Uh, so I hope uh, you can learn a lot today. Um, that's all from me. Thank you.